depositors are quickly withdrawing money. Analysis. This bank in China is definitely going to collapse. China's National Security Bureau threatens the market bears. Increase in severe COVID-19 deaths, Chinese expert warns of a new wave of outbreaks. Shocking, children's depression clinic in a Beijing hospital packed late at night. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Depositors are quickly withdrawing money. Analysis, this bank in China is definitely going to collapse. Local finances in China are facing a crisis, which could potentially trigger a banking crisis. Recent data released by the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, sheds light on the current situation of major banks in China. On November 9, the financial self-media, Lao Man, published an article disclosing a list of continuously overdue commercial drafts on the Shanghai Bill Exchange until October 31. In comparison to a month earlier, the count of rural commercial banks has risen from 5 to 9. Among these, three banks have faced overdue payments in both September and October. They are Huangshu Rural Commercial Bank, Wuyang Rural Commercial Bank, and Ningxia Hilin Rural Commercial Bank. Lao Man remarked that these three banks are undoubtedly doomed. Once more, it stressed that all of China's economic policies are now pushing banks to serve as the last resort for the economy's downturn, yet the banks simply cannot sustain this burden. Consequently, significant bankruptcies are inevitable, with rural commercial banks likely to be the first casualties. Laoman urged depositors of rural commercial banks not to leave any money and to withdraw it promptly. Trust in any rural commercial bank across the nation is advised against. If, by any chance, there's a belief that deposits below 500,000 yuan, nearly 70,000 US dollars, are insured in the event of a bank's bankruptcy, it's made clear, you won't receive this insurance because, under China's unique circumstances, unless bankruptcy is officially declared, your funds will not be returned. Writer Chui Qinghao added that Xinjiang Bank and Yantai Hengfeng Bank are on the brink of bankruptcy. Chinese economist Chen Xiaonong recently released an article via Radio Free Asia revealing that local government debt in China has surged to a colossal 80 trillion yuan, approximately 11.1 trillion US dollars. The mounting debt burden continues to grow, and the government strategy involves banks purchasing local government bonds, indirectly shouldering the weight of these debts. This maneuver leads state-owned banks into a sinkhole of bad debts. Despite this, Top echelons of the CCP are pressuring banks to provide emergency funds to various tiers of local governments. However, these local governments struggle to repay these loans to the banks. Bank funds primarily come from customer deposits, and when these funds are mismanaged, people face difficulties accessing their deposits. Chinese banks such as China Construction Bank, Bank of China, and Industrial and Commercial Bank of China froze customers' bank cards last year, restricting transactions to deposits only, disallowing withdrawals. In the last six months, cities like Shenzhen have repeatedly encountered issues with cash withdrawals from banks. In July, a significant number of Hong Kong residents attempted to withdraw money from Shenzhen banks, but the process was exceedingly challenging. Appointments had to be made a day in advance, and long queues were prevalent at bank branches. The entire process took about five hours, with some banks imposing a withdrawal limit of 100,000 yuan, approximately 13,903 US dollars. Simultaneously, on the day Lao Man advised rural commercial bank depositors to withdraw their money, American scholar Li Hengqing shared photos of a bank run at Songzhou Bank. Li specifically identified various problematic banks in China, such as Yunnan Agricultural Bank, Jiangsu Postal Bank, Changchun Huaxiao Bank, Dazhou Construction Bank in Sichuan, Qingdao Agricultural Bank, Tianjin Xinli Road Agricultural Bank, and others. Customers faced difficulties withdrawing money, and their withdrawal cards were restricted. Meanwhile, trust companies like Citic Trust, Chongxin Trust, Everbright Trust, Minqing Trust, Shandong Trust, Jilin Trust, Lujiazwi Trust, Anqin Trust, Sichuan Trust, all defaulted. 
Mr. Li Hengqing posed the critical question, where can Chinese depositors safely keep their money? China's National Security Bureau threatens the market bears. China's National Security Bureau, NSB, released an article on its official WeChat account on November 2 criticizing the market bears who are forever the pessimists targeting China's financial institutions to shake the international community's confidence in investing in China with the sole intention of causing financial turmoil. It warned that these criminal activities to endanger the state's financial stability will be seriously dealt with according to law. The Bureau's statement claimed that certain countries were using finance as a geopolitical tool to impose sanctions on China. They condemned the bearish forecasters, short sellers, market skeptics, and market manipulators for profiting amid the turmoil, accusing them of trying to undermine the international community's confidence in investing in China and provoking financial turmoil in China. The article also emphasized that national security authorities should give higher priority to preventing and resolving financial risks and crack down on and punish illegal and criminal activities in the financial sector that may endanger national security in accordance with the law. At the end of October, China experienced a situation where all four economic pillars – stocks, bonds, foreign exchange, and real estate – declined simultaneously. Official data showed that 10-year Treasury bond futures fell from 103.1 yuan, approximately 14 U.S. dollars and 16 cents, to 101.6 yuan, approximately 13 U.S. dollars and 95 cents. In the foreign exchange market, the yuan exchange rate against the U.S. dollar rose above 7.34. The Shanghai Stock Exchange Index also fell below 3,000 points at one point and approached 2,900 points. In the real estate market, real estate giants are heavily in debt, and so far, dozens of real estate developers are facing financial distress. Amid the economic downturn in mainland China, this warning from the NSB caused an uproar in public opinion. Mr. Liu Monhong, also known as the Godfather of Futures and a former Hong Kong delegate of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, CPPCC, raised concerns about the logic behind the NSB's actions. He noted that even during World War II, when fascist countries such as Germany and Japan established their rule in the countries they occupied, similar practices were not seen. He believed that using the NSB to save the market by violent means was on the wrong side of the issue. He pointed out that far-left rhetoric was the real reason private entrepreneurs withdrew investment, causing the market to spiral downward. Mr. Liu pointed out that the economy itself has its natural cycles of ups and downs. Buying in anticipation of an upturn is called going long, while selling when you see a potential downtrend in the stock market is called shorting. All are legal and based on data. He asked what stance the NSB would take if an economist or stock market commentator made an analysis based on negative data. For example, the youth unemployment rate of people aged 16 to 24 in mainland China was reported as 21.3% in July, foreign direct investment FDI, in the second quarter of 2023 was only 4.9 billion US dollars, down 87% from the same period last year Evergrande and Country Garden exploded, and from these, they predict the stock market has a chance to go down, then is this market skepticism, short selling or market manipulation? Will it undermine national financial security and be punishable by law? He believes that the NSB statement makes no logical sense and does not conform to the basic tenets of economics. Downward market trend came from extreme left ideology. Mr. Liu pointed out that in recent years, there have been extreme leftist ideas advocating the elimination of private property, the exit of private enterprises, the co-management and sharing of private enterprise employees, and even recently, through the explosion of China Evergrande, there are extreme leftists openly advocating the rapid freezing of the assets of private enterprises. But these bizarre theories are unimpeded. Mr. Liu also believes that the combined fallacy of the aforementioned misguided policies is why the market is moving downward and makes the market prone to negativity. It shouldn't be the case that when people make objective comments and analysis based on actual data, it's seen as damaging the country's financial security. 
We can never use the force of the government to order the market to be able to talk only about optimism, which is more in line with economic principles and laws of science. He believes that the priorities now are to correct the arbitrary allocation, arbitrary fees, and arbitrary fines on private enterprises, as well as the arbitrary filing of cases, arbitrary arrests, and arbitrary confiscations. All in all, we must instead establish a market economy based on the rule of law. However, Mr. Liu's proposal is difficult to implement under the governance of the CCP. As rural banks on the mainland face the risk of bankruptcy, highlighted in our News Bullet 1, on October 24, Xi Jinping personally inspected the Central Bank of China and the State Administration of Foreign Exchange, marking a significant action after his nearly decade-long tenure. Traditionally, such inspections were conducted under the guidance of the premier or vice premier. Additionally, during the Central Financial Work Conference from October 30 to October 31, Xi Jinping specifically emphasized the necessity of enforcing the eight insistences. These include adhering to the centralized and unified leadership of the party central committee in financial work and adhering to risk prevention and control as the eternal theme of financial work. He stressed that all financial activities must be strictly supervised in accordance with the law. Increase in severe COVID-19 deaths, Chinese expert warns of a new wave of outbreaks. The so-called mycoplasma pneumonia has recently erupted in mainland China. At the same time, the China Center for Disease Control and Prevention, China CDC, reported a significant increase in the number of deaths. Dr. Zhong Nanshan has warned about a new wave of new coronavirus infections. In more detail, the South China Morning Post reported on November 11 that Dr. Zhong Nanshan, who was connected to the Chinese government and a member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering, shared insights during a conference. He indicated recent mutations in the coronavirus with slight changes in the strain but an increased potential to evade vaccines. Our models predict a minor surge in infections in the months ahead, including January. Notably, on the 10th, the China CDC disclosed data on the new coronavirus situation in October, noting 209 new severe cases and 24 deaths. According to the data, in October, 31 provinces, autonomous regions, municipalities, reported 7,646 locally transmitted cases of the new coronavirus with sequenced genomes, all linked to the Omicron variant. These cases encompass 73 evolutionary branches, with the dominant strains belonging to the XBB series, such as XBB.1.9 and its variations, XBB.1.22 and XBB.1.16. As previously reported, there has been a significant increase in children admitted with mycoplasma pneumonia infections at pediatric hospitals in Beijing, Shanghai, Yunnan, and Guangzhou since September. The head of the respiratory department at Beijing Children's Hospital mentioned a noticeable rise in daily outpatient visits for fever and cough cases, with around 20% of children tested showing positive results for mycoplasma pneumonia. Similar scenarios have been observed in children's hospitals in Shanghai, Yunnan, and Hebei. Online footage depicts the overwhelming scenes of crowded hospitals, presenting countless patients stuck in seemingly never-ending queues. Due to the severity of the new coronavirus epidemic, schools in various regions like Zhejiang, Jiangsu, and Shaanxi have opted to suspend classes. Various regions, including Hunan, Sichuan, Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and Shenzhen have recently issued urgent notices mandating the public to wear masks. The Chinese National Health Commission has recently advised that if a patient or other household members exhibit severe symptoms like a persistent high fever, cough, or breathing difficulties, both the patient and their companions should wear masks during medical visits to prevent cross-infection. Experts are anticipating a potential peak in November. However, there's a concern regarding the seemingly insufficient response and preventive measures from Chinese authorities, raising fears of another severe new coronavirus outbreak. Shocking, Children's Depression Clinic in a Beijing hospital packed late at night. 
amid widespread occurrences of children infected with mycoplasma pneumonia flooding emergency pediatric departments across China, another shocking report from the Vision Times highlights the significant overcrowding in the pediatric depression outpatient department at Peking University 6th Hospital, the country's top psychiatric facility. The outlet cited a report from the Economic Observer, claiming that parents were observed waiting with their children at the Pediatric Depression Outpatient Department of Peking University 6th Hospital around midnight on November 7. As a premier psychiatric institution in China, the hospital's outpatient section is consistently packed during the day, with every available seat and corridor occupied by patients. A 15-year-old girl from Guangxi, awaiting her turn, was on her second trip to Beijing after being diagnosed with depression two years ago, prompting her parents to arrange for her to take a leave from school. Another parent, with a 9-year-old girl, paid over 1,000 yuan, approximately 137 U.S. dollars and 5 cents, to a scalper for a VIP appointment ticket to see a specialist earlier. Despite arriving at noon to secure a number, the husband found there were many people ahead in the queue. The mother expressed her anxiety, predicting, it will be at least 11 p.m. before we are seen tonight. Jean Danian, an academic committee member of the Chinese Society of Education Planning, spent almost two decades in the system and has observed the educational issues firsthand. He refrains from labeling children as problematic and instead sees them as struggling to adapt to traditional teaching methods and evaluation standards. Mr. Jean highlights the difficulties they face in their interactions with family, teachers, and peers, asserting that depression is a mere symptom, the true problem lies within the existing educational framework. Mr. Jean feels that in schools with standardized teaching and evaluations, kids are restricted from dressing as they like, keeping their preferred hairstyles, reading in their own way, and studying subjects of their interest. With such constraints, it's hard for children to enjoy school. Even the 10-minute break is gone, taking away essential aspects of life. It's quite terrifying. According to a report on the new Yellow River client, major psychiatric hospitals like Peking University 6th Hospital and Beijing Anding Hospital see a significant number of children from areas beyond the city. Many come from provinces like Hebei, Inner Mongolia, Shaanxi, and Hunan. When doctors come across severe or high-risk cases, children at risk of self-harm, taking one's life, or impulsive behavior, they suggest inpatient care. According to the 2023 China Mental Health Blue Book, the detection rate of depression among Chinese teenagers nearly doubled over four years. The information has garnered attention and led to discussions among internet users in China. One netizen expressed hopelessness, suggesting that with severe pollution, cancer affects one in seven individuals. Instead of focusing on education, they suggest focusing on longevity. They criticize the education system, labeling it as the root cause of various diseases, suggesting it's akin to forcing children into situations that can lead to depression and anxiety. Another says, depression and anxiety are omnipresent, everyone experiences anxiety, everyone feels depressed, even doctors, let alone ordinary people. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. If you find the information helpful, please share this video with a friend to watch together. This will be a great source of motivation for our team to produce more and more quality and reliable videos. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you for tuning in.